Ever think of the wail of a train whistle when little narrow gauge trains weaved through Colorado's mountains? Remember when passenger trains carried the mail? Or when the railroad station was the center of activity? Or remember when the station master called all aboard? Just moments before a sleek silver streamliner departed the station. Do you recall the enjoyment of scenery from a Vista Dome? You really could look up, look down, look all around, as a famous advertisement proclaimed. How about having a meal in the dining car and making new friends as the scenery passed by your wide picture window? Were you ever lulled to sleep by the rhythm of the rails? as your Pullman car passed through sleepy hamlets. There was a time when just the name of a train provided excitement and anticipation of a rail journey. It could be aboard the California Zephyr, Rocky Mountain Rocket, Colorado Eagle, Prospector, City of Denver, or Super Chief, just to name a few of the trains that served Colorado. The Colorado Railroad Museum brings these thoughts to mind. Donald Tallman, the executive director, recently said, It's a place where it's easy to lose track of time, where past and present commingle. It's a place where conversation frequently turns to, remember when? That's what the Colorado Railroad Museum is all about celebrating the past but honoring the present and looking toward the future it's bringing back those cherished memories of years past and it all started fifty years ago yes fifty years ago two men dedicated themselves to preserving part of colorado history railroad history that is they saved from the scrapper's torch some historic treasures that helped build Colorado. Robert W. Richardson and Cornelius W. Howe were two visionaries who opened the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado in 1959. In um, 1958 we, we bought the property and, and uh, uh, started, started planning. Uh, originally uh, the idea was to have a motel building also that provide cash flow for su supporting the museum but uh, after a few years we decided that really wasn't practical but uh, the museum uh, was on, on its way to supporting itself and uh, so uh, we did dispose of the motel we we've expanded the the museum operation and the scope of the museum we, we uh, acquired uh, besides our narrow gauge equipment we decided we needed some standard gauge uh, comparative equipment. Uh, originally, we wanted a, uh, a nice uh, 1905 from the Colorado and Southern Railroad, a 280, which unfortunately was scrapped before uh, they would accept our offer. So the Burlington then presented us through the National Rail Railway Historical Society our 5629, which is about the biggest uh, artifact we have on the property. Their mission was to preserve, for future generations, a tangible record of Colorado's flamboyant railroad era, particularly its pioneering narrow-gauge mountain railroads. We've all heard how railroads built America, and Colorado is no exception. In 1858, Colorado was a sparsely settled region of 40,000 hardy pioneers. Exploitation of rich gold and silver deposits in the mountains turned it into a booming territory over the next two decades. This explosive expansion was made possible by the coming of the railroad. Railroads pushed their way through canyons, creek beds, and high passes in the Rockies. The railroad was the lifeline of many mining camps and mountain communities. The Colorado Railroad Museum is located only a few miles from some of the canyons where those early trains operated. From its first years, 
the museum has been a caretaker of locomotives, both steam and diesel, as well as passenger and freight cars that traveled over Colorado rails for more than a century. One of the first standard gauge uh, engines, engines that we got for uh, first standard pieces of standard gauge equipment, which is over by the uh, between the, the museum building and the library, uh, that is the only remaining standard gauge engine rear Grand Western locomotive. All other ones were, were scrapped uh, and, and inadvertently. Uh, that one was missed because it was sold to a little railroad down in the San Luis Valley uh, and we picked it out of their rambling uh, engine house for, uh, before they managed to cut it up for scrap. Some of those cars and locomotives are part of over a hundred historic pieces of equipment at the museum. They range from narrow gauge to standard gauge locomotives, from wooden passenger cars to streamlined ones plus wooden and steel freight cars, and much more. Remember the list of famous trains mentioned earlier? One of them was the Super Chief. The Colorado Railroad Museum has the rear end observation car from the original streamlined Super Chief. It's the Navajo, which is on display and slated to be restored. And for those who like unusual motive power, the Geese Fleet presents unique pieces of passenger carrying vehicles. Over the period of, of, of years, we added, uh, as we were able to find things, um, this little galloping goose was one of a, of a group that were used on the Rio Grande Southern Railroad uh, as a substitute for, for steam trains when the business had declined to such an extent that it didn't pay to run it. A, a full-size train. Also on display at the museum are several railway post office cars, RPOs. And a recently acquired Burlington business car, number 96. All are rare and have a Colorado heritage. <laughs>